We spent some time this week marking the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and one of the most important speeches in the history of this country. But more than one man articulated a dream that day, even if the power of Martin Luther King overshadowed them. It was the toughest time slot of the day. Never mind having to follow Mahalia Jackson, the queen of gospel. I wish I could sing. Rabbi Joachim Prince was the last man up before Martin Luther King. I was the rabbi of the Jewish community in Berlin under the Hitler regime. The horrors this rabbi witnessed in Nazi Germany in the 30s compelled him to challenge America in the 60s. Bigotry and hatred are not the most urgent problems. The most shameful and the most tragic problem is silence. It was really marvelous to see a quarter of a million people. Become Rabbi Israel Dresner, a protege of Prince's, was standing just a few feet away on the podium that day and could feel the power of Prince's message ripple through the crowd. That really rang a bell because all sorts of clergy in America, you know, they weren't racist, they weren't bigots personally, but they just kept their mouths shut. As the wise man once said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Exactly, exactly. Prinz was expelled from Germany in the late 30s and came to Newark, New Jersey. My friend, Rabbi Prinz. Where his congregation welcomed the young Dr. King twice. So there was a direct line between the Holocaust and the American civil rights struggle? Absolutely. Jews are opposed to injustice. We are opposed to uh, hatred and bigotry and bias and racism and exploitation and so forth. And that's what we're supposed to be opposed to. America must not become a nation of onlookers. As he had three decades before, Prince refused to be silent and encouraged all Americans to speak up just as loudly. America must not remain silent. Not merely black America. Rabbi Joachim Prince, 50 years ago this week.